All right, everyone, welcome to day two of Context. We're excited to get started with today's sessions. Up first, a conversation about customer engagement. So imagine you're sitting at home after a long day of work at home, and you turn on the TV to catch the local news. The anchor says, send us pictures of the winter storm in your neighborhood. And gall darn it, you happen to have the perfect picture and the world needs to see it. So do you A, walk across the house, retrieve your laptop, try to remember your Facebook password and finally get it on the third try, find the TV station's profile and post your photo to their wall? Or B, search Google for 10 minutes looking for the right address to send it to, log into your email account, get overwhelmed by the 2,000 unread emails you have and consider throwing your laptop across the room like a Frisbee, refocus, upload the photo from your phone and email it? Or do you grab your phone, psych, it's already in your hand, and text your photo to the number on screen? Your customers are always looking for the path of least resistance. Who wouldn't? And in our next session, you'll hear from one of the largest media companies in the country as they explain how providing their viewers with an easy communication option like texting has increased engagement and led to better customer retention. Ian Hill, Tegna's Manager of Digital Audience Development, and Scott Hymas, Zipwip's Chief Marketing Officer, will explain how these learnings can be applied to any business, regardless of your industry. Enjoy. Ian, welcome to the Context Fireside Chat. I really appreciate your willingness to sit down today with us and share some of the ways that you're using texting to engage millions of TV viewers each month. Thank you, Scott. It's, uh, it's exciting to be here. I'm, I'm really always happy to talk about uh, engagement and some of the exciting things we've done with Zipwood. So let's start with Tegna, which is a pretty amazing company. You guys operate 63 TV stations across 51 different markets in the U.S. Your, your reach is amazing. Eye-popping 39% of TV households nationwide, and you touch almost 75 million adults via your various platforms every month. It's really quite impressive. Yeah, uh, it's a great it's a great company um, both to work for and as a journalist to be part of. We do such a phenomenal job serving, uh, as you said, a, a large population in this country. Um, we are the one of the largest independent broadcast companies in the country. We have more number one NBC and CBS affiliates than any other independent company. Um, one of the things we're most proud of this year, though, I, our TV reach is great. We're also a top 50 publisher on Comscore for digital. Um, so we're reaching, like you said, millions of people across all platforms. Um, it's a great place to work. And like I said, um, being in a company with this sort of reach that is also focused on serving the community, it, it really is a rewarding gig and a, a, like an exciting job. Yeah. So tell us about your role at Tegna, uh, driving audience development and engagement. Yeah, so I am kind of the on the ground guy. So I work directly with our thousands of journalists across the country to um, help them both troubleshoot and follow best practices with uh, all of the third party platforms we use, whether that be social media or even um, email or some of the new video uh, conferencing solutions we're using or ZipWhip. Um, through my work with those journalists, we identify best practices that we then share with the entire company, look for trends and ways we could better engage and serve our audiences with outstanding and impactful news content. So it's it's great, it's a, it, it's a job that really covers a lot of different things. On any given day, um, I'm working directly with a journalist to troubleshoot some issues they might have on social media. I'm digging into our metrics to identify trends in audience engagement and uh, topics that our audience is interested in. Or I'm talking to different companies that are providing new and kind of uh, very interesting software that'll help us engage and reach our communities. Um, so it, like I said, it's, it's, been a, it's a lot of fun. Every day there's something a little different, which I love. Yeah, it sounds like an interesting job. So yeah. where does texting fit into your engagement channel mix? How does it compare? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. So in journalism, um, and I think in our industry, it's no secret that we talk a lot lately about everything old is new again. Um, so, you know, 10 years ago, we were talking about the power of texting. And I think a lot of folks got into social media very heavily, including us, um, and saw its power. 
um, and learned a lot about it. And over time, we realized as social change, as social matured, as our engagement efforts matured, that there we were in need of other tools to directly engage our audience. The social audience has changed, obviously, in the last 10, 15 years. We needed other ways to directly talk to our audience, find out what they were interested in, what they found, what topics they found impactful, get their feedback in a kind of a more one-to-one -one environment. Um, we've heavily invested in newsletters as well. A lot of news organizations have. Um, but texting has really been an important part of that strategy. It's allowed us to directly connect, like I said, with our audience and get more personal stories about what's important to them and what's impacting them in their communities. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like there's some social media fatigue setting in in, in the audience, right? There's so much uh, happening around the social media sphere. Plus, you have to go into your social media app to respond, whereas texting is a more immediate natural, simpler flow to respond. Um, tell us about how it works. How does it integrate it into your program? Do you promote the fact that audience members can text you on air, for example? Oh, yeah. Um, so it's funny, you know, we're, we're just coming off election season here, um, or at least the peak of election season. One of our directions was to our stations was make sure you put your zip whip number everywhere. Make sure people know how to communicate with you, whether that's you know, on your air, on your newscast, obviously, on your social media platforms, um, on your building, on flyers, if you can, in as many different languages as you can. Um, everybody texts. Everybody texts. And that's been one of the biggest messages to our stations. Not everybody anymore really communicates through social media. Sure, everybody's on social media, media maybe to consume content, but not everybody communicates through social media. Given the fact that everyone texts, everyone communicates through text, we wanted our communities to make sure they know they could text us. And that just reflects our strategy with ZipWip throughout the year. Um, we are constantly coming up with, just to help our stations, like turnkey templates um, that they can put on air. We call them full screens because they fill up the screen. Full screen graphics that have a station's uh, phone number and like a, a question, you know, uh, show us, tell us why you voted, share your voting stories. Um, tell us what's important to you in your neighborhood. We put those on air. We also, uh, when we get a great photo through ZipWhip, we might put it on Instagram, share the, in the text of the post, share a ZipWhip number. Same thing, Facebook, we get a great video or something like that, we put it on Facebook, text us. You can find us here. Here's how to reach out to us. So it really is about, it's important to us, not just because we want to get the engagement from the audience, which we do, but we know that texting is how the audience communicates. So we want them to know that we're going to be there where they are by sharing our phone number everywhere so they can text us at any time and, and share news tips and, and share their story with us. It's really smart. So uh, how, do, how do you activate that engagement? Who receives the text behind the screen and then do you present it back on screen uh, during the broadcast or during different shows? How do you, how do you make it active? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. So when we started with ZipWeb earlier this year, um, initially we empowered our digital teams, the folks who run our websites, our social media. They were the first to, to train in the system. They understand engagement. Um, you know, engagement's part of what you do as a digital or social producer. So we trained them first and they were the original owner. It took off so fast. We got so much response from the community that we realized that you know, one or two digital producers a shift wasn't enough to adequately respond to all the messages that we were getting. So particularly this summer as COVID um, spiked, COVID cases spiked, and the role that ZipWip played in our coverage of COVID really increased, um, it became apparent that we needed to involve other members of our company in other members of our teams in our ZipWip, um, in our ZipWip workflow. So we worked to, with ZipWhip and with the team, we trained, we came up with a very lightweight training firm, like our sales reps and our marketing folks and folks who are not traditional journalists. So they could pitch in and help respond to some of the thousands of messages that we were getting. Um, it worked out really well. Uh, you know, we were able to just increase our response rate. Um, we respond to something like 85 to 90% of the SMS messages we get. So when you text us, you know you're going to get a response. It's because we empowered our entire company to be able to respond to messages. 
Um, we also worked a lot of times with um, public health experts, particularly this summer, public health experts, doctors, and we kind of showed them how to use ZipWeb. We just put them in front of the dashboard and the laptop and said, okay, you were on air for half an hour answering questions about COVID. Talk to our community now. And this is how you do it. It's really easy. You know, messages in the left, click, respond. And that worked out really well. Some of our stations that, um, that got involved, we have professional uh, medical experts involved. They really provide a great service to their community. Then what we would do is uh, we have a relationship with a company called Tagboard, which we've been working with for a couple of years now. And Tagboard provides a real turnkey way to get um, posts and in, uh, engagement messages from social and digital to on air. Turns it basically into graphics. Um, ZipWhip, uh, when we started working with you, you know, it was great to know that you had a Tagboard integration. So for us, it's just one click to get a message from ZipWhip, a question somebody has from ZipWhip into a full screen graphic on air, where then we could have medical professionals or anyone really, our anchors, um, answer the questions on air. It continues the conversation. That, qu that conversation starts one-to-one -one on ZipWhip, but we know when people message us that the questions they're asking are questions that others in our audience have, others in our communities. So by putting it on air um, through Tagboard and making sure we're answering it on air, we know we're providing that larger service. And Tagboard makes it really easy. And ZipWhip's work with Tagboard has made it really easy for us to do. That's great, Jared. How about measuring results? Do you, uh, do you think about a key set of KPIs around engagement that texting helps you achieve? Sure. Um, so with ZipWhip, our, the, number one message, the, number one, the number one metric we look at is SMS messages received. Mess messages received in general, but also SMS messages received. Because to us, that usually represents a member of our community reaching out with feedback or a question. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's they're coming to us for our expertise. It's a reflection of the relationship they have with us. So that's a measure of our success. So we look at messages received. Beyond that, it's about, okay, how did we use those messages we received to create content, to create stories and packages that serve our larger community? So we're always looking at, okay, we got some great questions um, in the past week about like Sharpie use on ballots. Um, that was a big question out of, uh, I think it was Atlanta that was going around the internet. Okay, what happens when you use a, a Sharpie? Um, you know, is, it, is, it, is your ballot still counted? We knew we got a bunch of those questions. So we were then able to answer those questions both by creating content for our digital sites and on air um, that said, hey, you know, when you use a Sharpie, um, your vote is still counted. It's going around, the, the rumor it's going around is false. Um, so it's about making sure we create that content that serves our larger, our larger audience using the questions and comments we get from ZipWeb. So that really is a measure of success. It's about messages received, knowing our audience trusts us enough to ask us questions, and then using the information they share with us to create more content that serves our communities. So what's next for your audience development and engagement strategy? Where do you go from here? Um, wow, you know, it's been an exciting year with ZipWeb. Um, you know, we're, we're looking ahead. We've learned a ton. Um, one of the, just coming again, right off the election, I spent Friday working with uh, a, a team called Verify. We have an internal project called Verify, which exactly like it sounds, they fact check rumors um, going around online and things that are people talking about and make sure that the community is you know, getting the true facts about everything. Um, so we have Verify works with Snapchat and has a Snap story. At the end of the Snap story, and the, the Snap story is about, about important topics, like social justice and the election. Um, and they'll talk about you know, the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and the Supreme Court nominations. At the end of our Snap story, there's always a slide that says, you know, do you have questions or do you want to know more about this topic? Text us at we have our zip web number. So I spent, you know, Fridays now, I work with our Verify team just to respond to three, 500 messages that we get overnight with people who have questions about things they saw just in the Snap story. Um, so that idea of like, with Verify specifically, we can address uh, important topics and rumors that are going around and we could use ZipWeb to 
spread facts on a one-to-one -one basis, I think that's something you're gonna see more and more from us in the next year. Um, we are going to, you know, social's great. Social uh, is a great tool for broadcasting still. We can get our message out to a lot of people. But when it comes to, to spreading the truth, there's nothing more powerful than having a one-to-one -one conversation with somebody. Mm -hmm. And ZipWhip allows us to do that. We've seen such success with Verify and ZipWhip. I think we're gonna see more of that in the coming year. One of our stations, uh, our station in Sacramento did something similar, KXTV. Um, this year in California, there was a lot of discussion about um, unemployment benefits. There were a lot of changes made to unemployment benefits. So KXTV said, we're gonna focus on giving truthful and meaningful answers to our community, community's questions about unemployment questions through ZipWhip. And literally every month they get thousands of questions that they're responding to one at a time and spreading truth and spreading facts that way. It's really been so powerful for us, that one-to-one -one conversation, the ability to spread truthful information. That is something I think you're gonna see us continue to focus on next year. You know, as unfortunately the pandemic continues to spike, we're gonna to continue to use it to spread facts, not fear about coronavirus. That was a big initiative for us this year. You could text Tegna stations text the word facts, uh, facts, F-A-C-T-S, to almost any Tegna station and get a automatic response with a link to the latest facts about the virus in your community. Um, we're gonna continue to do that. We're gonna continue to work with public health experts to answer our community's questions. And through that, we'll build a relationship, continue to build a relationship with the community, that relationship of trust that is so important to us that brings them to all our platforms, gets them to consume our content digital, watch us on air, it's important to our business and it's important and vital to us as journalists. Yeah, I love that. Spreading facts, one text conversation at a time, right? Yeah. You know, one-to-one -one, uh, nature, which is uh, so powerful for building trust and understanding yeah. and relationship with your audience. So let's uh, talk a little bit about how you discovered ZipWeb. How did you find us? What, what was the process of implementing? Sure. So, um, you know, we, you guys had worked with, we have a station in Seattle, King, um, and I believe that the, the ZipWhip at the time was based in the same building as King. So there was mm -hmm. some folks crossing each other in the stairwell, I believe, just having conversations about engagement um, and started from there. You know, um, we looked at, at several text providers and, and there's a lot of great folks, particularly serving the news community out there. Um, what King's work with ZipWhip started and what our other stations found working with ZipWhip. Um, and what we liked about, about your product is that it was just easy to use. Um, for us, it was pretty turnkey. Um, and that was really important to us right off the bat. We wanted to make sure that starting off our digital producers and our digital directors could easily understand how to use the product and send messages and communicate with their audience. Um, as we got more messages and it became apparent that we had to expand and empower more people in our stations to reply with it, uh, reply through ZipWhip. That focus on ease of use um, really, it really paid dividends because the product was so easy. It was so quick for us to train other folks and get them involved. Um, it was really vital to our success throughout the year. So really it started with King. I think ZipWhip also worked with a couple other stations of ours. Uh, KXTV was an early adopter in Sacramento, um, TH, KHTHV in Little Rock, Arkansas. We got some feedback from those stations. We tested, we worked with your team um, late last fall and ran some pilots with some other stations um, that really showed the power of the product and the power of texting. Um, so that's what convinced us. Um, and you know, we've been we've been happy as equipped clients uh, since January. No, it's great to hear. All right, so pretend that you're talking directly to our product management team. Uh -huh. What kind of features, capabilities would you love to, to see us build into the product? So first of all, I will say I do talk directly to your product management team on a regular <laughs> basis. That's one of the other things we like about ZipWhip. You know, your customer reps have been great and we have had um, the opportunity to influence the development of the product, which we really appreciate. Um, ease of use, like I said, is paramount. So we got in the platform, we could see how easy it was to respond to our community. One of the things we realized right off the bat was to make it even easier, we need to be able to parse out the actual messages from like keyword responses that we got. We're getting thousands of keywords. We need to be able to make sure we identify honest questions from our community. Um, we worked with your 
product team this this fall to develop a plugin called Quiet Keywords, um, which has been a game changer. Our, our teams are really excited about it. It just automatically archives the keyword only messages that have come into our dashboards. And that makes it so much easier for our teams to reply to honest messages. Um, the next step, and um, for the for the product folks that are watching this, I'm going to reach out to our product rep and try and schedule a call later this year to talk about 2021. Um, but the next step is really filtering messages um, and being able to tag messages. So one of the things that would be great, um, we've talked about the the idea that in the morning, if you have a question about the weather, for example, that you could text one of our weather people a message like, "Hey Rob, you know what's it going to be like today? Hey Rob, explain El Nino to me." To be able to search and easily filter ZipWeb for like, hey, Rob, or to be able to tag something that says coronavirus and be able to put all your coronavirus questions in one queue. That is really the next step, I think, for us and for the product. Um, we're really looking forward. I think, you know, we've already had conversations with your team. We're looking forward to getting that next step out, that next filter out there. It's just going to make the product even easier for us to use. And it's going to make our engagement with the community that much quicker and that much more, um, I guess, direct and important. Yeah, thank you for that feedback. So last question. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of uh, participants online today watching this uh, fireside chat, thinking about how they can build and evolve and scale their own business texting programs. What kind of advice would you have for uh, other businesses that are looking to you know, create a sophisticated program like your, like your own, which is very impressive? Yeah, um, the first thing, you know, the first thing to understand is that it is, it is a way to authentically engage your community. I think a lot of people do default to social with these ideas that, you know, I'm going to create a Facebook page, I'm going to get my community in, I'm going to get my Twitter account, I'm going like, to get 100,000 people following me in my, in my local business. Um, and again, Facebook and Twitter are great, they have a role, Instagram, they all have a role to play. But in the modern, I think in, in, the, in the communication landscape we have today, it's just gotten increasingly difficult to build an audience on social media. Um, put some resources into it, it's great, it's important, people look for you there. But if you want to have direct communication with your audience, texting is a great way to do that. Um, it's a great way to you know, move foot traffic, it's a great way to build a relationship that turns a person with a question into a customer. So it's, it's first of all, understanding that ZipWhip has a role to play in your communication strategy. Once you do that, I think it's about understanding the priorities you set in your communication strategy. Particularly if you're a small business owner, there's a lot of asks of you, you know. You're gonna be expected, again, to be active on Facebook, they have on Instagram, all these places. Um, think about how to make, start to make social media a little easier for yourself. You don't have to post seven times a day. You don't have to respond necessarily to every photo message you get posted on your Facebook page. Um, be strategic with your time and take that time you have left and put it into directly engaging your customers through ZipWorks. Because again, it'll turn casual users into customers. Um, I think it's, if you're a small business owner, I think part of the reason you get into it is because you like had developing customer relations. I, that's mm. part of what I like about my job is talking to the people we serve. If you're a small business owner, I think you like talking to your customers, you like engaging them. And ZipWhip is such a great tool to do that. It is worth your time. So understanding that it's worth your time and budgeting your time so you can put time into it and having those direct conversations, it really is in the end, I think, gonna turn folks into customers and it's gonna make a difference to your business in the end. Ian, thanks so much for joining us today at Context. Yeah, this was a great conversation. Um, you know, thank you very much, Scott, for having me. A lot of fun. We, we love using ZipWhip, and we're looking forward to continue, uh, continued success with it in the next year. Yeah, well, thank you for being a customer. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.